2018, and we are happy that you are here. Uh, we have 18 more days of traditional school. I'm sure the students are excited about that. Early college graduated Saturday, and uh, uh, the entire board was there for that. 100% graduation from the early college, so uh, they did a great job again. And over $3 million in scholarships uh, and counting from, uh, from that group of uh, students. The middle college is in exams all week, and uh, they will be graduating on Friday night across the street at the Civic Center. Uh, EOG is going to be starting here in just uh, a couple weeks, and uh, EOCs will follow very soon thereafter. So it's a busy, busy time of the year and a lot of concerts of one sort or another. As a matter of fact, there's a concert going on across the street uh, starting probably about right now, I suppose. And uh, so it's a busy time. We're going to move along with the uh, agenda and invocation for the board. I rep uh, would like to recognize fellow board member Mrs. Dottie Darcy. As we near the end of the school year, we are thankful for the wonderful teachers, administrators, and staff who have helped our students be successful in their education adventure. We wish our students a happy, healthy summer and a safe return to us in August. We wish our staff a time of rest and restoration as they prepare to lead on the next step of the education journey. We're thankful for the leadership of Dr. Stone, Dr. Johnson, and all those who will soon be retiring and wish them the very best. So would you pause for a moment of silence? Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Darcy. Uh, next is Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, tonight is presented by the West Caldwell High School NJROTC Color Guard, uh, Cadet Ensign Jordan DeRoost, Cadet Ensign Alex Marlowe, Cadet Senior Chief Larry LaBarbera, Cadet Chief Savannah Bryant, and this is under the leadership of Command Master Chief Wayne McCallick. So, if you will, please rise. Color Guard, post the colors. to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You may be seated. Thank you. Uh, we appreciate it. Uh, West Caldwell always does a great job with the NJROTC. Thank you. Next uh, is approval of the agenda, and the board has had opportunity to review the agenda and the agenda that is before them. Uh, do I hear a motion that we approve the agenda that you have before you? Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion to approve the agenda. Is there a second? Okay. Any comments? All those in favor, say aye. 
Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Uh, next, we have approval of the minutes, and on April 16th, <laughs> the board met in regular session, and we also had a closed session uh, during that <coughs> evening as well. So do I hear a motion that we approve <coughs> the minutes of both the April 16th board meeting as well as the closed session on that same date? Mr. Chairman, I move we approve the April 16th board and closed session minutes as presented. Second. Any comments? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Next, we had our district walkthrough. Uh, took place on the 23rd of April. And we had, at the end of the, the day, we had a uh, very short community meeting. And there were some minutes from that. Do I hear a motion that we approve the minutes of our walkthrough meeting on April 23rd? Chairman Pennell, I move that we approve the uh, High Brighton District Board <coughs> walkthrough community minutes held April 23rd, 2018. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? And motion passes. Okay, uh, next uh, on the agenda is the uh, May 7th special session minutes. We did have a closed session on that particular occasion, but those minutes will be uh, included at a later date along with the other closed session uh, minutes that we had with the School Boards Association in our superintendent search. So we are uh, doing the minutes just for our meeting a week ago, May 7th, special session, introduction of the new superintendent. Do I hear a motion? We approve those minutes. Mr. Chair, I move that we approve the minutes of the May 7th special session meeting. Second. Second. Any comments? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion passes. And next we have some uh, announcements. If you uh, have an agenda, you can see what we have coming up. I already indicated. Middle College graduation Friday. Next week, a big day, May uh, 23, million word readers. I think there's two groups. One is going to be at 430, and it's going to be across the street. And I think the other one's going to follow soon thereafter, what, 530 or 6. So uh, that's uh, a very important occasion, and we're going to have uh, quite a few students that are going to be recognized for that. May 31st, excellence in education. Uh, Awards that'll be at 6:30 at Civic Center. Uh, celebrate the children. Taste of Caldwell, uh, June 1st, and that will be at Cedar Rock on June the 8th. Graduation for our three traditional high schools, and the board will be divided up, and we'll be heading in different directions that night to cover the three uh, schools, and then of course that will be followed up by Project Graduation. And we encourage all graduates to go to Project Graduation. It's a great event. Everything's free there. It's at Bose, and that'll be from 10 to 3, and a lot of great prizes, including if you're there at 3 o'clock, your name's in the pot for a car. <coughs> so uh, probably worth coming. On June 11th, we have another board meeting uh, here in the uh, boardroom. And then on June 12th, we have our Caldwell County Schools Retirement Dinner. And that will be at 6 o'clock across the street at the Civic Center. Then on June 14th, retirement celebration for uh, Dr. Stone as well as Dr. Johnson. And that will be 3.30 to 5.30. There will be a program around 4.30, but the rest of the time you can come early, leave. It's a floating event, so you're welcome to come to that. And that's at the Civic Center. Next is honors and recognition, and the board's going to move down and congratulate these that are going to be uh, presented. And I'll call on Mrs. Libby Brown, Director of School Community Relations.
Good evening, Chairman Pennell, Vice Chairman Dwayne Knight, board members, and Dr. Stone. We have some incredible art pieces on display this month in our Education Center Art Gallery. And the main hallway of the Education Center is lined with beautiful artwork from elementary students in the Caldwell County Schools. So what a treat for us to end this school year. We would like to congratulate each of the following students whose artwork has been selected at the school level by their art teachers. And we'd also like to recognize our art teachers. We are going to start with Horizons. Thank you. We're going to start with Horizons Elementary School. And Teresa Hartley is the principal. We have our first grader, Jaquavian Irvin. And it looks like Jaquavian, maybe. Yeah, so she is here. So Ms. Hartley, if you'd like to come up with them. Liam Tigg. Liam is a kindergarten student. And Kyle Witherspoon. Also kindergarten. <laughs> Next we have Valmede Elementary School. Carol Sturgis is principal and Savannah Tester is the art teacher. Sierra Ann Gove is fourth grade. <laughs> Carly Boyd, fourth grader. <laughs> Emily Jones, fifth grader. There's Emily. And Landon Weaver, a kindergartner at Valmede Elementary School. So, now we're going to get them all centered, and this is a Kodak moment for our parents. From West Lenore Elementary School, we have artists there as well. We have Principal Travis Gillespie here with Savannah Tester, the art teacher. And Mr. Gillespie, if you'll come up, thank you. Hannah Barrett, second grader. Daniela Yusida, and she is a fifth grader. Sarah Lindemann, fifth grader. <laughs> Riley Miller, also a fifth grader. <laughs> Would you like to do Whitnell? Okay. And we will wrap it up with Whitnell Elementary School. And Kim Case, principal, is here. And David Hefner is the art teacher. Marie Cosby, fourth grader. So she's our first art student from Whitman. <laughs> Logan Hefner, first grader from Whitnell Elementary School. <laughs> Dr. 
Becky Jones, second grader from Whitnell Elementary School. And you can see their artwork here. Aaron Martinicio, fourth grader from Whitnell Elementary School. You know the drill. You have to scrunch in the center so we can get you all in the. Okay. Come on down here. Everybody follow Aaron on down. So we're very proud of those students. And we honored our bands and choruses last month, but we had so many to honor. We also have more bands and choruses to honor this month. So congratulations to the following bands and choruses throughout the district for receiving the highest ranking of superior during band chorus competitions held this school year. But before we introduce our band directors, let's focus on a student one of Caldwell's finest band students who actually was selected in the North Carolina All-State Honors Band. Autumn Reeves, is Autumn with us this evening? She's an eighth grader, yes, come on, Autumn. And Autumn is at Hudson Middle School and her band director is Leah Massey and her principal is Julia Lovett. And I think Mrs. Lovett is with us. If you'd like to come get a picture before we introduce our band directors. Now we'll turn our attention to the band directors and we have several to wow you uh, within the next couple of minutes. Granite Falls Middle, Patrick Haymore, band director there, and Melissa Costin, his principal, is with us this evening. The Granite Falls 7th grade band and 8th grade band performed at the MPAs this year and they received superior ratings. This is his 15th year teaching, Mr. Haymore's 15th year teaching, his second year in the Caldwell County Schools. In total, he's been awarded nine superior ratings and three in two years in Caldwell County. So those are great. Now we're going to turn it to our dynamic duo in music education, husband and wife team at William and Lenore Middle School. And we will start with Mr. Terry Reed, the band director, and his principal, Lisa Vaughn, is with us this evening. Mr. Reed, or William and Lenore Middle School, led by Mr. Reed, received a superior rating with seventh grade band superior rating with eighth grade band and that seventh grade band superior rating is his 14th consecutive the eighth grade band is the 34th superior uh, rating consecutive rating for William and Orr Middle School under Mr. Reed and or probably not under Mr. Reed 
or is it? No, no, no. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> I was like, I was like, why are you still here? <laughs> And the jazz band earned its 13th consecutive superior rating. And he's not going to brag on himself, but Mr. Reed is the only band director in our district to have earned a superior rating every year since the beginning of jazz band MPA 15 years ago. Two of those were in another district, but the last 13 consecutive years have been here in Caldwell County Schools. That's pretty interesting. <laughs> And now Mrs. Carla Reed, if you'll join us. She is the chorus director at William Lenore Middle School. <laughs> Sixth grade chorus earned a superior rating. Seventh grade chorus earned a superior rating. Eighth grade chorus earned a superior rating. Treble chorus earned a superior rating. And she has a grand total of 54 superior ratings in 17 years. And we have certificates for those, but as they're moving towards center, I want to tell you a few other things. They, they go to Atlanta usually on an annual basis. There's a competition there after the MPAs. The eighth grade chorus earned superior rating and first place. The treble chorus earned superior rating and first place. The eighth grade band earned superior rating and first place. And the jazz band earned superior rating and first place. And there's also a student, I'm not sure if Sam Dyer is with us, but we have a certificate for him to take. Okay, well you can take his certificate back, but he is the eighth grade trumpet player and he received Outstanding Soloist Award, the only one given throughout the entire competition. So kudos to William and Middle School Band. Yes, congratulations. And in that same feeder pattern, High Brighton High School, uh, the chorus department and the chorus program taught by Alyssa Lowe, the chorus director there, they received an honors ensemble at Small Festival Superior, Chorus 2 at Large Superior, Concert Choir Honors Ensemble at Large <coughs> Festival, MPA's Superior. So I think this team is preparing them and they <laughs> and they continue that legacy of superior performances at High Brighton High School. So we have with us Tyler Fredericks. He's a senior at High Brighton High School and you are Caitlin Petit. Caitlin Petit. So thank you both for being here. They are representing the High Brighton High School chorus this evening. Mrs. Logan, thank you. Okay, and we're going to do two more. So just stay up oh, there. Yeah, no, no, just stay no. there. Just stay there. We also have the High Brighton High Band and the High Brighton Symphonic Band also received a superior rating. So Mr. Suits, Hunter Suits could not be with us. And their principal, of course, is David Caldwell. I'm not sure if students are here or parents. All right. So here. So will you tell us your name, please? I'm Sarah Sarah Good. Mark Hargett. So thank you for representing the band this evening for us for High Brighton High School. All right, certificates in front of you and smile. Thank you. Congratulations. <clears throat> Skills USA. That's something that we hold in high esteem in the Caldwell County Schools. And I had someone recently say, do we still prepare people for work? <laughs> yes. Career technical education. 
It is nationally recognized and statewide recognized here in the Caldwell County Schools. Skills USA empowers its members to become world-class workers, leaders, and responsible American citizens. It improves the quality of our nation's future skilled workforce through the development of framework skills that include personal, workplace, and technical skills grounded in academics. So it's our pleasure this evening to introduce our first, second, and third place finishers in the North Carolina Skills USA competition. So congratulations to these top winners. And we will start with the Caldwell Career Center Middle College Engineering Technology and Design. Frida Parker is the teacher of that. And Frida's with us this evening. And Brian Sutter at the Forces Principal. So Frida, we will introduce your second place winners in that competition. Lee Melton, Duncan Parker, and Robbie Link. So we have two, maybe two of the three here this evening. So congratulations to these state second place finishers. Also from the Career Center Middle College, we have extemporaneous speaking. And that's also taught by Mrs. Parker. And Hannah Dotson was the second place finisher in the state in that. <laughs> Mrs. Parker's day is full because she also teaches robotics. And we had a first place team in robotics urban search and rescue that is garrett barlow and isaac fast so congratulations <laughs> we have one more and this we're going to change topics all together the medical math third place finish this is taught by connie root at the middle college and zoe Lohman was the third place finisher and represented by her wonderful teacher, Mrs. Connie Ruth. So this is our contingency from the Caldwell Career Center Middle College. Guys, anybody else a senior? Just teachers. Just teachers. Well, congratulations. He'll be back. He'll be back for more competition. Okay. Okay, the first place finisher. So I was going to ask you that. So Isaac Bast and Garrett Barla, if you'll stand up again, they will be competing in the National Skills USA competition. So good luck to both of you in Kentucky. Then we have second place finisher at South Caldwell High School in masonry, estimating. That's led by Scott Settlemeyer, teacher there, and the principal is Chad Smith. And our student in second place is Jacob Turner. And I think he's here with us. in second place at West Caldwell High School under the leadership of Mike Swanson 
In plumbing is Austin Guy, and Austin's principal is Andy Poole at West Caldwell. Austin's second place winner. Okay, here comes Mr. Poole. Thank you. And also in plumbing from West Caldwell High School, first place winner, the champion for the North Carolina Skills USA competition in plumbing is Caleb Crisp. And he had to leave. Okay, well tell him congratulations from us. So congratulations to that. And he'll probably still be nice. He will most likely be going to nationals. Yes. Okay. And you want to come down too to be in the picture since you reference the sound? Yes, Ken Robbins from South Caldwell, thank you for Andy, being here. I know you're proud of these young men. Volunteer of the Year, and I'm not sure if Mr. Gillespie got her here tonight. Oh, good for you. <laughs> Congratulations then to West Lenore Elementary, Angie Carroll, 2018 Volunteer of the Year. was awarded Volunteer of the Year last month. This is a program sponsored by Blue Ridge Energy. And with more than 600 hours logged this year, this year alone, she serves as PTA President, PTA Vice President, PTA Treasurer, and PTA Secretary right now. Uh, we're, we're fixing that for her though for next year. And Library Assistant, Classroom Tutor, Chaperone, and Fundraiser. She says teachers have so much to do, they need the extra hands. So thank you for your hands in volunteering for the College Honey. of a department right here at the Education Center, the Child Nutrition Department. Caldwell County Schools is one of only 13 North Carolina, North Carolina Summer Nutrition Program sponsors among the 111 nationwide. So one of 13 in North Carolina, one of 111 nationwide to receive Turnip the Beat Awards presented by the U.S. Department of Agriculture. This national award recognizes outstanding providers who work hard to offer high quality meals that are appetizing, appealing, and nutritious. The Caldwell County Child Nutrition Department was a silver winner in this Turn Up the Beat Award level. And this summer is really for the summer feeding program. So the Child Nutrition Department is already preparing to feed children and offer nutritious summer meals at 13 different locations throughout the county, free to all children, 18 years and under. So there's no registration, there's just come to the site and you can eat free in the summer at 13 different sites. The Child Nutrition Department added three new sites this summer, Willowbrook Apartments in Lenore, Powder Creek Apartments in Hudson, and Cross Creek Apartments in Lenore. They serve a variety of different meals weekly and they consist of three hot items per week. You just can't beat that. So we're so proud of you. And this is... 
congratulations to Guy Garner. He is our Director of Child Nutrition. And also congratulations to Donna Powell. And Donna is the Child Nutrition Supervisor. So mm -hmm. congratulations to both of you. Yes. We want to thank each of you for being here tonight. We do have a business session. You're welcome to stay for it. Uh, but if you have homework or dinner or waiting, then uh, again, thanks for coming. Okay, next item on the agenda is public comment, and as of 3.30 this afternoon, we had uh, two people that had uh, had signed up, and just a reminder, uh, our <coughs> attorney is the uh, timekeeper, uh, it's three minutes, and our first speaker is Lynette Shelby. Chairman Pennell, Vice Chairman Knight, Honorable School Board members, and Dr. Stone. Thank you for allowing me the opportunity to speak to you tonight. My name is Lynette Shelby, and I am the President of the Caldwell County Association of Educators, the local division of NCAE. I'd like to speak tonight about Policy 7100, the recruitment and retaining of personnel. How can Caldwell County recruit and retain the best personnel available? It starts with providing the staff it starts with providing staff the resources needed in order to educate our students, ensuring that our, st um, ensuring that our students have enough counselors to assist with challenges that most of us have never even thought about when we were young, making sure that our schools are safe and secure. Additionally, it means giving all staff members, teachers, principals, instructional st assistants, and every other staff member wages that are fair. Every staff member knows how hard the board works each year to do more with fewer funds allotted to us from the state, where the vast majority of our funding comes from, in order to keep teachers in the classroom. However, it comes to a point when even you cannot hold back the flood. To paraphrase a saying, you can only pick out a bone for so long before there's nothing left to pick. That is the reason why this Wednesday, May 16th, Teachers and staff are taking personal days and joining forces with NCAE and citizens across North Carolina to advocate for our public schools and students. As you know, our personal days are not free. Each of us pay a fee when we use a personal day, but we happily do so, so because we would like for our elected leaders to make our public schools, students, and staff a priority once again. If this is done, then Caldwell County will be able to both recruit and retain the very best staff for years to come. What I respectfully ask of the board is to ensure that if any staff member desires to take a personal day this Wednesday, May 16th, in order to advocate for his or her students, then every reasonable effort should be made to ensure that he or she is allowed to do so. Thank you for your dedication to Caldwell County staff and students. Thank you, Mrs. Shelby, appreciate it. Uh, we have one other that uh, uh, we have on the list tonight, Mrs. Carly Schwartz. <clears throat> I'd like to thank all of you on the board who have a record of being very supportive of our, our schools and the needs of its students and educators. And I believe you have our best interests in your hearts 
which is why I request that you turn May 16th into an optional workday for teachers to advocate for their profession, which is state mandated as part of North Carolina's teacher evaluation process. Many of us feel our voices have not been heard, as each year we've had to make do with less. These cuts are personal and have had direct impacts on our ability to be effective teachers. Each time our school bus breaks down, I am reminded repairing buses was one of the expenditures our state legislatures decided counties should absorb. Now, I don't know from what pockets that money got pulled. What I do know is that two years ago, printers were removed from classrooms to save money. No one asked teachers about the cost of that decision, and three minutes is not enough time to explain the flaws with communal printing or why young learners need to work math problems on paper with pencils rather than on computer programs. I also need more than three minutes to talk about what the loss of instructional assistance has meant, even to those of us who have never had one. I am now spending more of my year remediating because the lower grades are spending more of their time having to single-handedly provide care that goes well beyond just teaching curriculum. And speaking of care, I need way more than three minutes to talk about the mental health issues of students that bring with them to school and why we must have an adequate number of counselors and resources to provide for these children. And educators are performing triage throughout our schools because teacher-backed solutions continue to be ignored and unfunded. We are first to identify problems such as the decline of students' writing ability since Read to Achieve was mandated. Yet we are last to be asked why. Over-testing, teacher-student ratios, funding for the arts, due process rights, divisive bonuses, how schools are graded, and many other troubling issues provide proof that educator pleas have been disregarded for too long. Now those on this board who have experienced their own frustrations dealing with this state's budget cuts have the power to send a clear message to Raleigh that public education deserves to be fully funded. And while closing schools is a difficult decision, this is one day, one unprecedented, historic day when numbers matter. And so please take this opportunity to join with other school systems that have freed educators, students, and parents to attend May 16th Day of Advocacy. I sin sincerely appreciate your time. Please advocate with us. Thank you, Thank you Mrs. Thank Schwartz. You. Uh, we appreciate your being here, and uh, I think both of you touched on that we, as a board, are big supporters of, of teachers and what goes on in the classroom, and, and we certainly know the importance of uh, the teacher in the classroom on, on a daily basis. So thank you for your, uh, your comments. We appreciate that. Uh, <coughs> Dr. Stone? Uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, if you'll, uh, item nine, which is for board action, board policies. We have 24 policies that are being put forth by the North Carolina School Boards Association. The cabinet have reviewed those, and we are recommending those be put on a one-month comment period. Just a substantial, some of the big changes, one, uh, the, most of the changes are small and things that reflect state law and language that has to be in new policies. Uh, the definition of who can be um, included in policies regarding discrimination, harassment, and bullying has been increased to include board members and visitors and third party vendors and others, so that's pretty clear. Also, there is a number of provisions that deal with uh, financial management. So the administration recommends a one month approval for the one month comment period of the 24 policies. Mr. Chairman, I move that we <clears throat> approve for one month comment period the uh, policy changes as they are listed. Is there a second? I second the motion. Anybody have any questions or comments? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed and motion passes. Anything else Dr. Stone? Oh, I think that's it for me. All right. Uh, I'll call on Dr. Trish Johnson, Associate Superintendent for Human Resource Services.
Mr. Chairman, members of the board, and Dr. Stone, I have three items for your attention this evening, beginning with Exhibit 6. Exhibit 6 includes usual and customary personnel items that are presented for your information only, requiring no action. In Exhibit 4, you will find usual and customary personnel items requiring action of the board. I respectfully recommend approval of these items as they have been previously presented to you. Do I hear a motion that we approve the usual and customary personnel matters as Dr. Johnson has presented those? I move we approve the usual and customary items as presented by Dr. Johnson. Second. Second. Any comments? All those in favor? Say aye. Uh -huh. Aye. Any opposed? <coughs> motion passes. Thank you. And finally, Exhibit 4, I think that's where I am. Exhibit 5, excuse me, includes student transfer requests that were received since the last board meeting. I need to make a correction. And the last, uh, next to the bottom, total board approved, that's a typographical error. That should be for 2018-19 school year, as reflected at the top of the page. So, for the 2018-19 school year, since your last board meeting, we received, during our open enrollment period, another 87 requests for transfers. Of the 87 requests, 77 of those meet established board criteria. I respectfully recommend approval of the 77. If approved tonight, that brings the total board approval for the 2018-19 school year to 390. I respectfully recommend approval of the transfers as they have been presented. Do I hear a motion that we approve the 2018-2019 student transfers as have been presented by Dr. Johnson? Chairman Pennell, I move that we approve the 2018-19 student transfers as submitted by Dr. Johnson. Is there a second? Second. Comments? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Johnson. Thank Appreciate it. Next, Dr. Carol Burns, Associate Superintendent, Education Program Services. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, and Dr. Stone, uh, I have for you this evening the career and technical education plan for the next school year. And Libby Huff's here if I can answer all the questions. She hasn't trained me very well. <laughs> we shall see. The local plan must be submitted each year, and it includes our program and our personnel for the next school year and the strategies for meeting those eight performance indicators. And that uh, plan is giving you where we, uh, how we've done on this performance indicators. We've done extremely well. We have been able to conquer uh, four of the six, uh, no, four of the eight, six of the eight. And uh, the one area we struggle a little bit with is the non-traditional uh, worker. That would be a student going out in a non-traditional area. So. We've talked a great deal about that and how to improve that because that is the mandate from the federal government. But with the increase in the culinary arts and lots of chefs, we have hope that we'll be able to do something to this particular area. So that's one area we'll work on diligently. This plan includes our teachers. There are 56 teachers. 571 months of employment. That's the way this plan is written. Uh, there are 10 priorities included in there. I want you to make sure you look at those priorities, mainly being employability and partnerships and <coughs> updates and renovations. And I know some of you have already looked at the renovations, especially in the family and consumer arts area. Uh, this plan also includes 80 courses that the students can take in eight program areas and 14 career clusters. Um, there is, this program probably is changing faster than any other area in the curriculum because of the economic situation. So I know you've been watching these changes take place. Uh, we're very proud of the work that goes on in this area. And one area I'm going, going to deviate a little bit, Libby, to talk to them about is I work with the and listen to the employers. Uh, the one thing that they want to 
talked to me about all the time is that we got to keep teaching the soft skills. So I do want to tell the Board of Education we are teaching those soft skills. I've asked them to define this for me. And the soft skills they always define is uh, the students need, need to be taught to show up for work on time, dressed appropriately, ready for a full day's work, and to be able to get along with other people. That's the basic. And we're diligently working with that. But as we work with that, when the students get to be about 13, 14 years old, they have a tendency to watch everything around them to see what the other adults are doing. So I want to tell you, we're trying to teach the adults the soft skills too. So uh, that is sort of a thing that we talk about quite often. We're very proud of the CTE program. It's done extremely well. And one of the areas that we've been at been working with diligently is trying to grow the area for the student participation and leadership and that it's done very 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 well so this plan is presented to you and we request that you approve this plan for the 1819 school year mr chairman i move that we approve the 2018 19 career and technical education local plan as it has been presented to us. Yes, sir, second. Second. Anyone have any <laughs> questions of Dr. Burns? I do, sir. Okay. Uh, one thing I'd like for you to add, and you may have covered it <coughs> with the soft skills, is communication. Uh, the yeah. students need to be able to communicate. That's the, uh, that is certainly there, but we will <coughs> make uh, sure we use that one. The other one, uh, through our meeting process, uh, looking for a superintendent one of the things is, is my question is I know we've got the business community uh, the development plan that the state yes. is sitting out uh, I'm assuming that we are trying to tie in with what they're telling us the future needs are yes uh, to to change I mean if we need to change just to, to stay in front instead of well as always we don't have the crystal ball so we're trying Correct. to really train the students for a future that we can only guess what it's going to right, be I understand. but we are all right thank you and i'd also like to say it is evident that set folks are working on soft skills these students who are recognized tonight Correct. eye contact handshake okay. very comfortable as they were presented yes. tonight good job thank, thank you, you. We, the, we are working on that but we as as i indicate we have to remind the adults that even though they're trained they keep looking to see what the adults are doing so we have to remind the adults that they are a key person in this and i wasn't being critical i was just saying I, the communication thing is very important and you know and i know we're trying to stay who knows where the future is in 10 years or six years where these children or young adults will be leaving no. school but uh, just staying well, as to me of them. all persons that communication area would be important yes Thank That's you. true. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Thank you, Dr. Burns. Next, we have Associate Superintendent Dr. Jeff Church, Auxiliary Services. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, Dr. Stone, I have three items for your attention tonight. Exhibit 7 are bid tabs and contract for driver's education. We put that out on IPS, which went statewide and uh, even probably national, nationally, and we received two bids, and the lowest responsible bidder was uh, North Carolina Driving School. So I respectfully request the acceptance of the bids and the contract. Y'all hear a motion that we approve the uh, bids and the contract for driver's education with North Carolina? North Carolina driving school. Okay. Yes, sir. Do I hear a motion? Mr. Chairman, I move that we accept the bid and the contract for the North Carolina driving school. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Any questions or comments? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? <laughs> motion passes. Okay. Thank you. Exhibit 8 is our investment grade audit, energy audit agreement uh, just uh, technical correction on this uh, this is the same one that you approved last month uh, in looking at our regulations we have to announce in the paper 
that 15 days prior to this meeting. So we're making that correction tonight. So we're uh, requesting that you approve it again. So I respectfully request that uh, you approve the energy investment grade audit agreement. Mr. Chairman, I move that we approve the IGA investment grade audit. Is there a second? I second the motion. Anyone have any additional questions? Dr. Church mm -hmm. has explained that. Uh, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, any opposed? Motion okay. passes. Thank you. And Exhibit 9 is a resolution concerning the sale of real property owned by the Caldwell County Board of Education. And for uh, this, I'm going to defer to, to Mr. Hall. Uh, board members, I, along with Dr. Stone and Dr. Church, have talked quite a bit about uh, the, the best way procedurally to, uh, to handle this. And, of course, it will be a policy decision on your part as to whether you want to sell the property or not. But I think uh, a couple of things that, that are important for you to know before you make that decision, and that is, number one, something that most of you already know, and that is the North Carolina Constitution requires uh, that for a, any Board of Education to sell property, they must get fair market value for that property. They can't give it away um, even to another governmental entity. Um, it, so the second provision, of course, um, and again, y'all have dealt with this before and you know this, the second provision is that before it can be sold to anyone, it must be offered to the Caldwell County Commissioners uh, and also must be offered, of course, at fair market value. Uh, as you know, we've received an offer uh, from, from Hudson. It's, it's not a secret. It's a matter of public record. Hudson's offered to purchase the property on the terms and conditions that are laid out there in the resolution that you have in the board information file. And essentially what those terms are, $100,000 over a course of about 10 years, um, essentially the board would, would own or finance the sale of that property. Now, before that transaction could even potentially take place, and that'll be up to you whether you want to do that or not, like I said, it must be offered to the board of commissioners. The decision to be made tonight is how much you all want to offer the property for to the Board of Commissioners. What we have in the resolution as it is right now is just essentially what Hudson has offered. Uh, you may decide, however, that uh, that is not, that's more or less than what you want to offer it to the commissioners for. Uh, if you offer it to the commissioners uh, for that amount and they accept it, they accept it at that point, then it's a done deal and it'll be sold to the commissioners uh, for that amount. If you offer it to the commissioners and they turn it down, then um, in conjunction with Dr. Stone, we've pretty well decided that what we would advise you to do would be to go through what's called a negotiated offer and upset bid process, wherein the offer uh, that's been made by Hudson at this point would be published in the paper and uh, they would be given 10 days uh, to, get, to receive any upset bids whatsoever. Uh, an upset bid, to, in, to make it simple, an upset bid would have to be about 5% more than the prior bid. And we would go through that process until we reach the, the highest and best bid. And at that point, if the board wanted to, it could sell to those folks. But, but at any time, the board may reject its offer to sale. It doesn't have to accept the offers. But it does, if, it, if the board wishes to accept an offer, it must be uh, the, the highest and best offer. Um, again, I, the main purpose of me talking to you about this resolution tonight is to decide whether you want to amend the resolution in terms of the dollar figure you're going to offer it to the county commissioners for. Do I hear a, a motion from anyone on the board that would like to amend the offer to the county uh, for whatever, maybe tax Make value? A motion that we amend the resolution to first offer to the county commissioner. For well, let, tax let me value. let me back up and be clear. So the resolution as it is right now, it offers it to the county commissioners. We have to do that. We know that must be done. The question is, what's the dollar figure that you want to offer to the county commissioners for? What's the tax value? The t well, Dr. Church and I were just sitting there talking and we had two different numbers on two different sheets, but it's somewhere between somewhere between 527,200 and 779,700. We'll take now, the lower of the two. <laughs> do what? The lower of the two of the five. Yeah, 527. Okay, that's so would we, 
Would that be the minimum we take from anybody? No. So we might offer it to John Brown down the road cheaper than we offer it to the county? No. So if you offer it to the county for a given amount and they turn it down, then you go through the, the upset bid process. So it'll be placed on the market for whatever that offer initial offer is. I mean, Hudson has made one. The commissioners, they might say, well, we don't want it for that amount, but we're going to participate in the upset bid process okay. and could turn right around and, and outbid uh, Hudson or anybody else who wanted the property. Okay, as I understand it, we have a motion to amend the offer yep. to the county for the tax value and the lower amount, which was 527 and some 527? He said 527, 200. Okay. Yeah. So we need a second to that. Mm -hmm. Anyone? It seems like there's two parts to this question. Yeah. If, if the, in the next statement, are we willing to take 100 from the town of Hudson? So let me, let me explain. Why wouldn't we just start at 100? Do you want me to second the motion and then we can go into yeah, discussion? So yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll second okay. it and then we discussion. can go into discussion. Okay. I'm, okay. I'm just not sure why we're offering it to the county commissioners at a lot higher cost than we're willing to accept from the town of Hudson. Okay. So, and let me answer that question for you and, and try to explain why we, we have to go through these hoops. And that is, number one, because of the state constitution, number two, because of state law. Like I said earlier, any Board of Education property must be sold at fair market value. Um, fair market value is, is, in the eye of the beholder in many ways, is what a willing buyer and a willing seller is willing to, to um, come to an agreement to. Uh, as a professor, I said one t had one time would say, how many angels can dance on the head of a pen? I don't know what that means. but. Uh, Essentially, who knows what fair market value is. But going back to the, the issue of the constitutional principle that it must be sold at fair market value. So if you look at it, um, if we offer it to the commissioners at something that's reasonably fair market value and they turn it down, that's fine. Um, however, if you go through the, the upset bid process that we're going to go through if the commissioners turn it down, the North Carolina Supreme Court has said essentially whatever number comes out of the upset bid process is equated to fair market value. If you offer it to the commit, you have to offer it to the commissioners first. So you can't go through the negotiated upset bid process first. So we don't have that cover of that upset bid process. And that's why that a, a reasonable person might think that you, you need to, to up the offer to them to something that you believe to be fair market value. You may believe that $100,000 and the, and the uh, terms and the conditions of the offer as stated are fair market value. Uh, but you don't have that cover here of the upset bid process that you will have if we go through that process. Keep in mind, if it's offered to the commissioners and they turn that whatever number down, they're welcome to, to bid on it at whatever the opening offer is, just like anyone else would be welcome to bid on it. So the difference would be that that 100 that Hudson is offering Somebody may come back and make it 150. Hudson may come back and make it 175. So it actually can get That's back right. up to a much higher number. Yes. Whereas what we offer to the county commissioners is a number. That's the number. That's right. That is the number. And so that's has to the real be fair issue. Market value. That's the real issue. <clears throat> that's right. It has to be fair market value to the commissioners, and you don't want to leave it open to challenge. And so if you mm -hmm. offer them, you could offer them some extremely low number, and they might accept it. But you know somebody might disagree with that and, and challenge that under the law. And you don't have that protection that you will have through the upset bid procedure process. So what you are before you, board members, I think, is that this resolution is an addendum to sell it to the county commissioners or to offer it to the county commissioners at a certain price. Is that correct? That's right. Yeah. So the board just needs to decide and that, what number it is. That price, 527, 200. Yes. And we have a second. And we vote on this and approve this, and it's going to be offered to the, the county commissioners. If they turn it down, then it's going into the bid, counter bid process, and anybody, including the county commission, can bid on it at that point. That's right. That's right. Okay. Yeah. 
So, so I, Everybody. I, want be, I want to be clear on one thing. <clears throat> the, as as Miss Brent said, it's almost like there's two parts to this, and, and you've explained it that way. So the first part, and you can tell me if, if I'm misunderstanding, the first part is we're basically saying the 527 because the county says 527 is the tax value. So right. that's how that number established, that's what the fair market value is. So we would not be breaking a rule or a law by offering it to the county for 100 because nobody knows if that's a fair market value. So we would offer it to them for the tax value, which is established by the county. They can either accept or decline. So at that point, if they accept it, it serves. If they decline, then it goes into the market starting at an offer that we've got now, and that's where the bid process starts at that point. And that's so it. at that point, any person can buy it from 100000 up. That's right. If, if we ch and then we can still choose not to sell it if it's not the number we want, but it is the starting point. So That's right. We're just doing the 527 so we know that we're at least at market value and yeah. nobody in a, the state can come in and say, yeah. well, you know, you, how did you know that was a fair market value? Right. You just threw a number out there. So you've got something to go by. I should have let you explain this from the beginning. <laughs> you, did quite, you did quite well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So are, we, are we voting on the bid process? We're too? voting on the amendment. Uh, no. And then was, the the resolution. If the that's so right. We're voting on the amendment first. And the, and then if it passes, you'll vote on the amendment, the the resolution as amended. Yes. Right. Any other comments or questions about the the uh, motion to amend? All those in favor to amend the uh, the motion, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Now we go back to the resolution that is in hand, and uh, we need a motion to approve the resolution as it has been amended. Mr. Chairman, I move that we approve the resolution. Uh, resolution on the sale of the Horizons building as it has been amended. Is there a second? Second. Any comments or questions on that? Is this where the, the, the bid details come in? Right, that's yes. the resolution. So yeah. if if Dr. Burns wants to up the bid from 100000 she could do that and we could sell it to her as an individual. Yeah. Yes, if but you wanted. There's to. certain criteria. That, that's right. That the bid has to be, be above so much higher. Thousand. That. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, and then it, has it to keeps be. going until the last yeah. bid is there. Well, and it's, it's probably in here, but I don't remember. The upset bid. So we've got a bid on the table. If, if it goes through, we got a bid on the table. Uh, what's the period of an upset bid for someone to come do the upset days. bid? They've got 10 days from 10 the date of initial and notice. And then it starts a new 10 days once that bid mm -hmm. is on the table mm -hmm. yeah. from that point forward. Yes, okay. we, we would, we would republish that days, notice. Well, I'm just saying within 10, yeah. within, 10 days, within 10 days, you can right. upset the bid. And it's this is communicated to the public how? Yes. Well, any way we want to, but the law requires that it be published in a newspaper of record, which would, here would be the Lenore's newspaper. Would it be on Facebook? Would there could be, be a for sale sign in the yard? Could, could It certainly could be uh, if, if you all wish to do that. Is there also a time limit for the commissioners to give us their decision? Is uh, there a time limit on that? Not, not explicitly in the statute. Uh, I mean, one may be inferred, but I can tell you that um, I mean, I've spoken to the county manager and the plan would be for them to vote one way or the other at their June meeting. Okay. So. okay. Thank you. I was just trying to figure out the time frame. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Anything else? All those in favor of the resolution as has been amended, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Hall. We appreciate it. I do it. have one more question. Anybody can bid on it? Anybody? Yeah. 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 And we would accept their bid? No, we, we don't, don't have to. Accept. We don't have we to don't accept have any to. bid. We have to. Uh, uh, this, from what he said, we don't have to accept a bid. I mean, it can go, it could nobody bid on it, and we could still choose not to sell the property. Right. But we would base that on the amount of money 
or who we're selling it to or a combination? Well, the, I, I would, if it were me, and I was recommending it be based on the purpose of the building. building. Like if a charter <coughs> school or a private school yeah, tried to buy we've it, already I'd said say forget that it. we weren't going to do that. Yeah. So I mean, that, that would be me yeah. advising the board. I mean, you obviously would have to make that criteria. We, we'd have to vote to accept or not accept at that point. Is that correct? Yeah, that's right. You'd have an opportunity to. Okay. okay. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Hall. Thank you, Dr. Church. Next, David Johnson, Director of Finance. Mr. Chairman, board members, and Dr. Stone have two amendments tonight. The first one is Budget Amendment Number 11 for the State Public School Fund. It is an increase of 23000 excuse me, $25,359. And the second one is budget amendment number 12 is for the federal grant fund is an increase in federal grant allocation, $51,463. Like to request that these be approved as submitted. If this is approved tonight, um, the total budget for Caldwell County Schools will be $123,000,000. $151,515.75. Okay, do I hear a motion that we approve the state public school fund amendment as well as the federal grant fund amendment? Chairman Pennell, I move that we approve the state public school fund amendment and the federal grant fund amendment as presented by Mr. Johnson. Second, Second the motion. Okay, any comments or questions? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Mm -hmm. Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. Uh, Dr. Stone, you have any? Well, just one. I want to appreciate the uh, teachers who came and spoke to the board and to us. Uh, we certainly share many of the concerns. I do want to, to advise the board that as administration, we are watching very closely the calendar on May 16th. As you know, that there is a saturation point where the district cannot have enough subs and bring in enough subs to cover the classrooms. Um, and so when we reach that saturation point, we will have what I consider an emergency and a crisis. Uh, should we reach that point, then we'll have to make a decision about that day being a teacher work day, an optional teacher work day. We are watching that now. We were very surprised at the numbers that are requesting substitutes as of today, and that number I'm sure will continue to go up, and the biggest concern would be if we were to move forward, uh, what would happen Wednesday morning. And the last thing this district wants to do is to put, a, put our kids or in a situation where they would be unsupervised or in an unsafe environment. So I do want you to know, I know there are two ways around this. One is to amend the cal calendar. The other would be for us just simply to say we cannot operate safely with the supervision that we want and desire on May 16th. So we will make that decision soon. Uh, we are again watching the numbers. There are 60 eight percent of the students in the in the public school systems of North Carolina and some charters 68 percent of the kids will be out of school on May 16th because of districts most of those are the large districts I think the number is now up to 40 um, and so again we'll we will we will not operate school if it's an unsafe day and we don't have the supervision so I just wanted you to be uh, aware of that and I do want to say to our teachers out there it's we I support them in their efforts, and I certainly, um, I know the Board of Education has always risen to the challenge of supporting our teachers, and so, and it's not just teachers, and it's not about just pay, it's a whole bunch of issues about public education, so just want you to know, we'll be watching that. I will make that call if it's an emergency situation, and we'll notify the Board. Okay, thank you, Dr. Stone. Uh, do I hear a motion that the Board go into closed session? Mr. Chairman, I move that we, the board, go into closed session to discuss matters pursuant to North Carolina General Statute 143-318-11A5. Second. And we have a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. And we will return and we expect there probably be some sort of action at that point. Uh, we should be back shortly. Libby, do you have a copy of the resolution in case somebody wants to see it while the board's...
uh, we are back in public session to uh, uh, I hear anyone with uh, a uh, motion um, chairman panel I move that we approve the resolution that we were presented in our packet to support North Carolina teachers second and Chairman Pennell, may I read the resolution? Mm -hmm. Whereas the Cobble County Board of Education values our educators who work with their students every day, and whereas we are confident they are making a difference in the lives of our students and their families by using their own money to provide supplies, including lunch money for hungry children, and whereas our educators make sure that children in their classrooms do not go without what they need, and whereas we have been made aware of the following information. North Carolina is 39th in the nation in per pupil spending. We are 37th in the nation for teacher pay. Almost 25% of North Carolina's children live in poverty. Over 7,452 North Carolina teacher assistants have been lost since 2008. The average cost for a family health insurance plan for an NC State employee is $9,576. Thousands of North Carolina teachers work second jobs and many public school workers qualify for public assistance. Despite an, an, an economic recovery since the crash of 2008, North Carolina state lawmakers have not adequately funded our public schools. Now therefore, be it resolved this 14th day of May 2018 that the Caldwell County Board of Education does hereby support North Carolina teachers. Any other comments? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Uh -huh. Any opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. And Everyone have a nice evening. Do I hear a motion? We adjourn. I make a motion. We adjourn. Is there a second? second. First and second. God is the second. All those in favor say aye. 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 We are adjourned. Have a good evening. I've got all your pen.